All right, time to <clears throat> it's time to make another video. <sighs> Let's make a hackintosh. So why did I create a Hackintosh? Well, I'm not complaining or anything, but my five-year-old MacBook Air, um, and yes, I am pretty lucky, the clear is terrible, well, and yes, I am pretty lucky to even have one of these, let alone any computer, because, yeah, but um, when it comes to video editing, this thing is honestly kind of terrible. It's able to edit um, some 1080p videos in iMovie, and that's pretty pretty good enough for me. But I want to start getting into a bit more, I don't know, more advanced in my video editing. And yes, I am still using iMovie, and there's only so much you can do. So really, what I meant in more advanced is that I can make it and just render and up and just go to files and can upload to YouTube much faster. And that's honestly pretty slow with this. But thanks to the Hackintosh I built, it's much faster. It actually does upload to YouTube much faster. And everything's just much faster. And if I'm, and if I like, if I ever get like something like Final Cut Pro, I'm pretty sure this thing can handle it very well. So now we're gonna be talking about the parts and how long it took me to build it. So, yeah. So what is a Hackintosh? Well, really, a Hackintosh is basically a Windows computer that you either built or you bought it um, pre-built, like an OME, Dell, HP, or something like that. And you basically hack it so you can run Mac OS like you would run on a MacBook or some kind of Apple device. And you just hack it to run Mac OS. And that is basically what I did. Now, just a heads up, this is not a guide just to show you how to do it. I'm just talking about like, like why I did it and how it's been doing so far. And maybe encourage you to try to do it for yourself as well. So for my CPU, I was originally going to go with an i5-7600 non-K, so keep that in mind. But every time I try to install macOS, it just would not work, okay? Every time I install it, it would just crash and just have to restart, and it just continues cycling for this for almost forever, to be honest. So I decided to switch the CPU with an old i5-6400T that I had when I first started building computers, and that installed perfectly fine. So I'm not sure what happened. Uh, I'm pretty sure this the K the KB Lake i5-7600 should work because the new i5K iMax used those, but I'm not sure what happened. I'm just happy enough I'm able to get this to work. So for my CPU, I have an i5-78... I'm getting these confused. I have an i5-6400T. Yeah. For my motherboard, I have an MSI VE250M Pro VD, and the reason why I chose this motherboard, well... I really didn't choose it. I kind of had to use it again because it was the only thing that was Hackintosh compatible that I owned. And yes, I could have used something else, but every time I install it, it would not work. So, yeah. Now for RAM. Now for people who actually understand what I'm talking about right now, you're probably going to freak out right now because I have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 Corsair Vengeance RAM in this Hackintosh. And I know, you're probably already going to say, why would you need 16 gigs of RAM? I really don't know why, because since my MacBook Air right now, I don't know why I picked it up. Since my MacBook Air right now only has 4 gigs of RAM, I was kind of worried that only 8 gigs was barely going to be even enough. So, especially, especially in 2018. So, I decided to go all out and just get 16 gigs of RAM. And, yeah, it was way too much, but I, I guess I'm just future-proofing it for the future, I guess. But... I'm not sure, but 16 gigs for me is plenty for 1080p video editing. I might have, and if I really want to, I could eventually go to 4K if I want to because my iPhone does shoot in 4K, but there's really no point, so, yeah. Now, for the case power supply, um, that's just something random I had laying around. So, for the power supply, I had this EVGS 600 watt power supply. I decided to just use that because... If I ever want to upgrade anything else, I have plenty of power to do it. Now for the case, I'm not <clears throat> I'm not exactly sure what kind of case this is, but I know it's from Rosewill and from doing a little research online, I believe it's the Galaxy 2 case. 
Now, I got this because a while back ago, um, I bought it off Newegg because there was a mail-in rebate, and it made this case only like $20, so it was very worth it back then. So, yeah. Now for my hard drive, or, well, storage device, I guess. So, since this motherboard had an M.2 SSD, I decided to go kind of go all out and get a very fast M.2 SSD, which I did. I got a 256GB M.2 SSD. I have no idea what brand this is because I asked my dad to buy it, and I gave him the money and just asked him, can you buy an M.2 SSD, and he just did it, and I'm just, he bought it off Amazon, but I don't have access to his Amazon account because, of course, he doesn't trust me with it. So, I don't know what brand this is, um, so just look it up from the photo, I don't know. Now you're probably wondering, where's the GPU? Well, because in this day and age, and because of crypto mining, I don't have a GPU. Now, that is one of the reasons, and the main reason, to be honest, is because I could not get any drivers to actually work with it. So I was originally going to go with, a G with my GTX 1050 Ti, but every time I try to install the drivers, it would just not work. It would just go to a really low resolution. And when I try to open any any kind of tab, it just like either is invisible or it's really glitchy or just just is a bunch of pixels that just look like not even anything's there. So after you know, nearly two weeks of trying to get it to work, I just I eventually just gave up. I decided to just use the integrated graphics on the i5 6400T, and that's plenty enough for me, because this is a Mac, because since Mac is trash at gaming, I really don't need a really high-end graphics card to do much of anything. Yes, a graphics card could help me, help me with video editing, but since I'm not really doing much of anything besides video editing, and probably watching YouTube, I guess, on this Hackintosh, I really don't need a better GPU. Um... And plus, if I'm ever going to play games on it, it'd probably be Minecraft. So, yeah. So, this is just an estimate for the entire price. So, the i5 is probably around $120, plus, like, probably another 60, 160 for the RAM, plus another an estimated 55 for the motherboard. The case, um, I believe it was $25. Power supply, estimated $45. Um... The storage, the SSD, um, that was, I believe, $75. So, altogether, it's estimated to be around f mid $400, because $480. So, I'm estimating this to be around $400 to $500, so let's just put it at $450. So, my mid $400, $500 um, Hackintosh. So, compared to what you can probably buy on eBay, which is something like this, it was probably, it's honestly very worth it. Now, I would show benchmarks of gaming usually, but, well, since Minecraft can basically run on anything, even this thing, there's really no point, because you can easily hit 60 FPS with integrated HD graphics on Windows, too. Now, in general, was this Hackintosh worth it? Well, when it comes to web browsing and simple video editing, it's perfectly fine. Um, I'm not sure it's that big of an upgrade of, against my old MacBook Air, but for the future, it's a very compelling, s s um, decent workstation for Mac OS right now. And even if I want to upgrade my video editing software to like Final Cut or Adobe Premiere, I'm pretty sure this thing can handle with no problems. Now, the only downside is probably it has to be the integrated graphics. But either way, this Hackintosh is actually a pretty solid upgrade from my hack from my old MacBook. So, yeah. What are we doing now? And just play the outro or something. I don't, I don't care.